What is it about giant pandas? Whatever it is, they're very easy to love. They're also very thin on the ground. There are only about 1,600 left in the wild, making the panda one of the world's most elusive and endangered creatures. But there is some hope. In the foothills of the Himalayas, in the far west of China, there's a haven where pandas are thriving. Not only that, they're producing lots of baby bears. It's a kind of IVF program for pandas who are notoriously half-hearted about sex. And we'll be doing our bit to help save the panda. Two of them are preparing for a new life in Australia at Adelaide Zoo. Amid the misty mountains and ancient culture of the world's most populous country, a rare privilege. To hold in my arms one of nature's most precious gifts. You're a heavy little bugger. Oh. A baby giant panda. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love you too. Now, remember, you only eat fruit. But tragically, this gorgeous bundle of fluff is as endangered as he is adored. <laughs> only 1,600 of his kind remain in the wild. That iconic face has become the very symbol of endangered species. If we can't save the panda, what hope is there for other species? If we can't save the panda, then that would be a tragedy. I think they're the most recognised animal anywhere in the world. I think mean, pretty much everybody can recognise a panda. And, and I, I hate to say it as a scientist, but they are terribly cute. <laughs> Here she is, our beautiful girl. Zoologist Dr Chris West and Adelaide Zoo Chief Heather Caddick have come to China to bolster efforts to save the giant panda from almost certain extinction. They say she's the most beautiful. And their Australian expertise may just succeed where the Chinese have failed. One of the things that we do in Adelaide is release a lot of native Australians back into the wild that we've bred. And so I'll be hoping that we can get alongside Chinese colleagues and say, well, this is how you can prepare them to go back into the wild. You think you might be able to teach the Chinese something about pandas? Yes, we can do that. It's an historic move. China is entrusting Australia with a pair of giant pandas for a long-term stay. Wang Wang, a male, and this hungry young female, Funi. How old is Funi now? Two and a half years. Two and a half years old. Chris and Heather are meeting our newest immigrants for the first time. She's really a toddler. Absolutely. She's, she's a little kid. Kindergarten panda. What exactly does Funi mean? It means lucky girl. Fu means lucky and me means um, female. Lucky girl to be coming to Australia. Certainly. Mm. <laughs> we hope so. There's only 1,600 of these pandas still around. Mm. Just being this close is extraordinary. Isn't it's it? a huge privilege, isn't it? She's gorgeous and she loves a tucker. Mm. Look at that. It's costing Adelaide Zoo a whopping $13 million to adopt the pandas for the next 10 years. The hope is their stay will raise awareness and, more importantly, provide valuable research for the survival of the species. But it's a loan only. Booni and Wang Wang remain Chinese citizens. You have to eventually give them back. Well, they remain the property of, of the Chinese government. What if Funi and Wang Wang have a baby? And it's born on Australian soil. We can't keep it. We can't give it Australian citizenship and call it Bruce or anything like that, no. <laughs> Maybe not baby Bruce, but any addition to the species is vital. The giant panda's natural habitat has shrunk to just six tiny areas. It really wasn't that long ago that these mountains were home to tens of thousands of giant pandas. But people pressure, economic progress, factories like this one, has seen massive clearing of their beloved bamboo. Without that number one food source, the panda has been pushed to the edge of extinction. 
they're one of the animals that are almost designed to flirt with extinction because of their restricted diet and the fact that they breed in, in the way they do. Like all pandas, Wang Wang is a carnivore by design. But in a strange quirk of nature, lives on a diet almost exclusively made up of bamboo. It's tough and extremely hard to digest. And that's why they need to knock back a staggering 20 kilos of the stuff every single day. This is obviously a, a poo from a young panda. You can tell by its size we crumble it apart. Would you like to have some to crumble it apart? No, not, not really, but good. But they mustn't digest a lot of that, Chris. I mean, look, look at that. It's yeah. like little tiny pieces of bamboo, isn't it? Pretty much, pretty much. And that's why they have to eat sometimes for up to 18 hours a day. What yeah. a life. Yes. A shrinking food source is one thing. But the other problem is pandas aren't good at making more pandas. You're a beauty, aren't you? You're a beauty. The great hope is that Funi and Wang Wang will get together and produce a cub just like this one. Trouble is pandas are notoriously disinterested in sex. Females are only in the mood for four days every year. The male is only ready for two days. With a mating season like that, it's a wonder these little fellas are born at all. If they were humans, the divorce rate would be about 99%, wouldn't it? Shocking but animals, I don't think, have sex on the brain like humans. No, not. <laughs> but the Chinese have become expert at breeding pandas in captivity. Well-staffed nurseries filled with incubators and intensive artificial insemination programs are reaping big numbers of tiny bears. So this is a panda sperm bank? Yes, here it is. So in the Hu Bank, here are thousands of panda sperm store here. Thousands and thousands of little, beautiful panda babies. Yes, they're black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, sweetie. How are you? Veterinarian Lo Li is a panda midwife at the most high-tech panda research center in the world. You're outside now. Do you miss your mom? You Chinese, you almost worship the panda, don't you? They're very important. Uh, yeah, we are pandas here. In our mind, it's VIP, very, very important. VIP? <laughs> yes, very important panda. <laughs> <laughs> it's a military-style operation where nothing is left to chance. Pregnant panda, they need a quiet place. To Every female panda in Lee's care is constantly monitored on closed circuit TV from this central surveillance base. All the time she's in here waiting to give birth, mm -hmm. that, that camera yes. is capturing 24 hours a day what she's doing. Yes, the camera will work out around the, around the clock and the to um, record every moment movement for the panda. Every single moment. Yes. But this clinical approach to breeding has its critics. No dairy farmer would, would treat his cows like, like these giant pandas are during breeding season. American scientist Kati Loeffler once worked at the research center and is scathing of the conditions a mother panda must endure. She's moved indoors into a, a medieval cell. I mean, I'm sorry, that's just what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a cement slab with bars. She doesn't even have a bench to sit on. I mean, nothing. She's on that cold cement, 24 hours a day light, and literally 12, 24 hours a day keepers sitting there watching her with a clipboard, writing down everything, forcing food at her. And frankly, the degree to, some, to which many of these animals suffer in captivity, I would rather see the species go extinct. The reality is China's technological approach is producing a panda baby boom, but it's a short-term solution. The best chance of real survival for this species is to successfully release bears into the wild. And so far, that's been a tragic failure. In 2006, a five-year-old bear named Zhang Zhang 
became the first captive bred panda to be released. Less than a year later, he was found dead. We need to do more research and to how to train them. To, I mean, for the to, to go back into the wild. Yeah, prepare for the ranger deals to wild. It's a it's a long way to go. The the enclosure for each individual panda will probably be about four times the size. And, and that's where Australia can help. We got experience with rock wallabies and bilbies and batons, and the principles are the same. We can do what we call a soft release into a fairly protected area so they learn how to forage for food on their own. We can teach them how to avoid particular predators and risks. Yes, we can do that. Teaching China something about a panda is a bit like taking coals to Newcastle, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't presume to teach them about pandas, but I think that we have similar experience to share, and in particular about reintroduction. But what may save pandas in the end is universal adoration. An almost magical allure that inspires astounding passion. A baby panda uh, will make a sound like this to its mother, <coughs> which sounds really cute. <coughs> yeah, <laughs> you got it. You, are you sure you weren't a panda? <laughs> Aha, you can hear a sound. <laughs> Jay Allen moved from her Sydney home to Western China just to be closer to pandas. She's researched them so closely, she reckons she can even speak their language. What about the male? <laughs> Around the breeding season, the male will climb up the tree. Uh, so that its voice will be projected across the whole valley. Um, and it sounds uh, starting a bit sort of like a bark like a dog, like, um, oh, oh. and then uh, developing really like a, a roar of a tiger or a lion. And it just carries right across the whole valley. I <laughs> do that one again. Yeah, they've got it. Oh. oh. <laughs> Jay's passion is shared around the globe. <laughs> it's so sweet. It's hoped Wang Wang and Funi will be settled in Australia by September. Helping to ensure pandas will still be weaving their special magic on the world a hundred years from now. Can you imagine a world without the giant panda? I don't want to try and imagine a world without pandas, in a sort of impoverished, blighted world. And that's why I'm a conservationist. I don't want future generations to inherit that world from us. Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for our brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.